Okay, I finally get to introduce to you guys the most impressive acronym in all of statistics. The Stable Unit Treatment Value Assumption, otherwise known as SUTFA. And yes, people do call it SUTFA. So SUTFA contains two assumptions in itself. Uh, it's pretty uh, broad. Uh, the two assumptions are, one is consistency, and the other one is no interference. The other one is no interference. Interference. And so let me, let me, uh, interference. Uh, so let me go ahead and explain both of these assumptions. So the consistency assumption is, again, it's, it's almost uh, too obvious. Uh, but the assumption is well defined, and you guessed it, treatments. The assumption is well defined treatments. And if you don't have well defined treatments, you basically can't perform causal inference. So, what do I mean by uh, make a well deformed treatment? Uh, so, for an example, uh, this example might be exercise. This might be exercise. So, let's say you go ahead and you poll a group of people. And you get back from one person, they went ahead, they did a run for one hour. That's pretty good. That probably counts as exercise. And you talk to another person, they did a run for 30 minutes. 30 minutes probably counts as exercise. And someone did a run for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, that's probably too short for exercise, right? So you say, no, they didn't do exercise. And then you get someone that did a run for 28 minutes. Is 28 minutes count for exercise? Is that too much, too little? The idea here is that exercise is not super well defined. What if someone just played on a VR video game for 30 minutes? Does that count for exercise? Like they were moving around. If you are able to well define your treatment, if you don't have well defined treatments, you're going to be unable to do any causal inference because you're going to be unable to tell which treatment was assigned to which patient. So pretty obvious. The no interference one, uh, this assumption is a little bit more complex. This is probably something that you didn't think of before. Uh, so this assumption assumes that uh, person I's treatment, where person I is just, just some individual in your sample, has no effect, has no effect on the outcome of any other person uh, on, and I'm just gonna write this as Y sub J, so the outcome of any other person. Okay, so what does this mean? Uh, again, I think this is sort of best explained with an example. So for example, there was a study. Uh, so this was a study done on AIDS patients and it was studying uh, an immunosuppressant. So a specific immunosuppressant, they wanted to know whether this immunosuppressant was gonna be effective uh, for other people in the future. Uh, so it was very much so well-meaning. So they tried to do, they you know, did the good old double blind, they uh, you know, made sure they had all the other assumptions. The interference assumption was violated. The idea was that the patients uh, wanting to get the immunosuppressant, because that's probably a good thing, it probably uh, had, had good results, they would go with their friends and they'd share their treatment. So if you were friends with someone that got an immunosuppressant as, as their treatment value, that would go ahead and affect your outcome. So there would be interference in this case. The no interference, the sattva uh, assumption, uh, was violated. So both of these assumptions are pretty important. Uh, the consistency assumption is crucial. If you don't have consistency, then you really don't have an experiment in the first place. Uh, the no interference assumption, however, is not 100% crucial. That being said, uh, to go ahead and deal with a no interference assumption, if we, if we go ahead and we assume that there is interference, you're gonna need a very sophisticated model of this interference, and it's a, a bit out of the scope of this class. Uh, it's definitely out of the scope of a beginning causal inference class. Okay, so this is the stable unit value, uh, stable unit treatment value assumption, and this is why it's important. 